I don't know about you, but when I look at a magazine on a news rack or anywhere and I see bad masking, it drives me nuts. I seriously, I, I've got some sort of like issue with it. And and I find myself at the movie theater. I find myself at, 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 at when I went to Blockbuster before it closed down. You know, I'd, I'd look and I'd be like, oh, oh, I just can't stand it. Um, you know, sloppy masking, uh, soft masking, hair. Oh God, hair is one of my pet peeves. If you can't do hair right, don't mask. Shoot bald people. Seriously. Okay, so <laughs> masking. I, I'm going to dive right into it. And it, I use a method called the quick mask, which enables me to paint my mask uh, with a brush. And I mean, instead of the quick selection lasso pen tool, this one seems to be the most accurate for me. And it really, it really gets me in there and, and enables me to, to uh, avoid those common mistakes that you see everywhere. Jump cut. Okay, so there's a few things you need to know about masking. Number one, when you're shooting and you know you're going to be compositing, keep a few things in mind. Number one, the color of the model's hair has a huge effect on how well you're going to be able to remove it from the background. Now, you take somebody that has bleach blonde hair and you shoot him against the white backdrop, it's going to be hell trying to remove um, her hair from the backdrop. Now, you shoot that same woman bleach blonde against black and all of a sudden that extraction becomes extremely easy. So think about the contrast between the, the model and the backdrop when shooting, when you're going to be compositing. Blonde hair, you can shoot from uh, like a medium gray all the way to black. If you have brunette to black hair, you want to be shooting on a light gray to white backdrop. All right, so let's dive in and I'm going to show you how I mask. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come in and we're going to show you where the toggle, the quick mask on and off is. Quick mask, on, off. And what you'll notice is up here, you'll notice quick mask on, quick mask off, or Q. Okay? So what we're going to hit is we're going to hit Q and to enter our quick mask mode. We're going to select a brush. We're going to right click. And I use a brush around six pixels and it varies depending on where in the image I am and what megapixel I'm at uh, and with 85 percent hardness okay I'm gonna click off and we're going to zoom in uh, I'll start at the pant legs uh, another quick key uh, is uh, R if you hit the R key you'll be able to rotate your canvas so that you can actually work at a more comfortable angle all right back to B, uh, the B key, and we're going to just go in and go around the edge. Now it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, the closer the better, but you want to be right on the edge. Alright, so now that we're up to the hair. Now the hair is important, and if we're going to mask each individual hair, it, there's absolutely no possible way this is going to work. So what we're going to do is loosely trace around the hair. And to quickly get back, uh, you can just hit escape and it will bring you back to uh, zero degrees. And command or control zero will bring you back out full. Now what we have here is an outline. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to select our fill tool, which is over here, paint bucket. Uh, you can hit G and make sure that we're on black. 
and what we're going to do here is we're going to just click on the background one now once is not enough if you notice what we're going to get is this little line so I typically do it three times two and three and that totally gets rid of it now we have a perfect mask to exit the quick mask what we're going to do is we're going to hit Q and we have our dancing ants zoom back out and this is where it gets easy literally we're going to come down here and we're going to hit mask you know if you need to go pee and now is the time get a drink get a sandwich because this thing is long so yeah it's the easiest to refine your your mask on the background that you're going to be choosing um, because it saves you time in the end where you don't have to, to meticulously go in and mask because the background is going to cover up some of the the uh, flaws in your mask so let me just bring this over to the background that I've chosen okay so there's my background what we're going to do is we're going to scale this down and you hit command or control T and a quick way to zoom out to see the bounds of your transform box is to hit command or control zero even if you're you're zoomed way in and you can't see him command or control zero is going to bring you straight out alright to constrain the proportions so that we don't get fat Mike or skinny Mike we're going to we're going to hold down shift now if you want to constrain to the center as well as constrain the proportions hold down alt at the same time so shift alt and there we go so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring this in and that's probably pretty good uh, uh, you know what I'll just get rid of the the middle there there we go alright enter alright so now what we have here is we have a rough mask but the tones are very similar to that of the of the background what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click on the mask I'm going to go to refine mask and that's gonna bring up a dialog box with a bunch of confusing sliders alright so what we're gonna do here is we're going to actually paint on the gray area that we want to get rid of and just rough you don't have to be perfect and just go around the image. Okay, so now what what we have here is a is a mask, and it does look pretty good. But we're going to want to bring some of this back. Now to toggle between taking away and putting back is simply Alt or Option, and you notice that the plus goes to a minus. Now we're actually going to go back in and we're going to paint just along the edge. You know, you don't want to go too much because you don't want to paint back the gray. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, tackle the uh, sliders here. So we're going to zoom in and we're going to go. Now, it's smooth and feather are, are rarely anything that you mess with. Uh, just because it tends to ruin the image it softens it and feathers it way too much contrast and shift edge now I have these settings set and they're pretty decent but if we bring them back what we're gonna notice if we go all the way it really increases the contrast and almost it, it hardens the brush so we're gonna find a happy medium here Now shift edge will constrict the the actual mask. Yeah, I know he just doesn't shut up. He's just tweaking the fucking sliders, tweaking sliders. I don't know. And you literally just have to play with these sliders until you find something you like. Now make sure that you're not just looking at one side of the image because sometimes the other side will drastically change. Okay. 
So now we have a new layer with the layer mask. We zoom out and we notice that it looks pretty good. Now one last step you can do here is zoom back in, click on the mask, go back to your brush tool, B or brush, and select a soft brush this time with a 0% hardness and literally go back in with white and paint in some of the areas that you want to bring back. Now you could do this all day. I mean, this is, it's all in the details. And honestly, if somebody's not going to be zooming in, they're not going to notice. But I, I can't settle for that. I never have been able to. I've got to come in here it's super high and, and, and just do this. Why? I don't know. I've got a problem. But I know that if anybody ever wanted to print this poster size, I know that it would be good. And you notice I'm just roughly painting back in. I mean, if you want to paint individual hairs, you go down, you bring your brush down to a one or two pixel size brush, and you can actually physically paint hairs back in. All right, so the mask is finished. Now, before we go on to any other steps, I typically go in and I make sure that my mask is looking right because it looks good from here. Well, this is where most people make their mistake. They stop here. They're like, oh, it looks good at 19.5% zoom. So let's go in. And let's take a look at 172%. Okay, we notice we missed here. Uh, and this edge looks a little hard. So let's go and fix that. Click on the mask, click on our brush, right click, and we're going to take our six pixel brush at 85%, but we're going to bring that way down to about 29 or 30%. Now, when we go back in here, and we're going to start just painting away little pieces just to soften things up. And this is where you can get as meticulous as you can stand. I drive myself crazy sometimes with how close I have to go in and fix things. And for the sake of demonstration, I won't go crazy today but you'll get the idea. All right. All right, so there's a few things that that I would do just to finish this up. I mean, the mask is perfect. It looks believable, um, but I think that they, the, the color balance is maybe a slight bit off and it could be a little bit maybe uh, darker. So what we're going to do here is we're going to is we're going to come in here and we're going to adjust the color balance. Now if you adjust a color balance like this, it's going to adjust the entire image and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down alt and click in between the layer and that's going to just adjust me. So we zero this back out, and we want to add maybe, maybe a touch of warmth. And maybe a little yellow. That looks better. Now we click back down on me and maybe desaturate a slight bit. And last but not least, maybe a little curves adjustment. Okay, so I'm not even gonna pretend that this is the first time I did this. Um, I thought that I'd be good at it by now, uh, but apparently it takes more than one time to get good at something. God. <laughs> okay, so if you liked the video, subscribe. Or wait, is it uh, subscribe? Um, if you have any questions, comment, uh, like. You can find me on Facebook uh, at uh, Michael Herb Photo, and of course, thank you for watching.